me here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. I found an agony column ad in Barbara Faversham's flat. It concerned her father. It promised information if she'd keep a certain appointment. Recklessly, she obeyed, and I, fearing the worst, set off with Charlie Austin, hoping to catch up with her. The trail started at a coffee stall on the embankment, and there I learned that she'd bought a lot of toothpick quills from the coffee stall keeper. Quills, of course, immediately associated in my mind with feathers and thus I knew she was not altogether satisfied in her mind. The coffee stall man said her escort was impatient and inadvertently mentioned Dorking. With this slender clue, Charlie and I set off and, on reaching Dorking, found another clue which indicated her destination. Dean or Mr. Hex? Well, where'll that be, do you think? Haven't the faintest notion, Charlie. You know... I'm just wondering if we ain't bothering ourselves for nothing. That's what I thought at first. But then I say to myself, why the quills? No, she wasn't very happy when she met whoever she did meet and then had the brainwave of leaving that trail behind her. Ought to be spanked running off like that. You never said a truer word, Charlie. You and I will see to that little matter. If we find her. When we find her. All right, now, let's ask someone where Dean Hall is. Hey, you. Yes? Know where Dean Hall is, chum? Dean Hall? Oh, I reckon that's Councillor Dean's place, a mile up the main road. Big red house. Two-storey place, you can't miss it. Got bars on the windows. Bars? What? The councillor lives in a jail? <laughs> but he's always scared of burglars. He a rum sort of a cow. Must be. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Happy state of affairs, I reckon. Bars? Cool. I hate some. Jolly hard to get out of, Charlie. That's so. I might be hard to get through, too. Well, I think we'll walk to Dean Hall, Charlie. If Barbara's there, we'll have to find out whether she's there of her own free will or not. Somehow, I think it's the latter. That's the idea. But if she's staying because she likes it, we've had our trouble for nothing. Exactly. Uh, do you know something, Charlie? I think we'll postpone our little visit till after dark. If things aren't all right, I'd rather not be seen from any of the windows. After all, we've got a good bit of scouting to do. Oh, that's OK by me, Mr. Hex. Careful, Charlie, is the word. My hat, what a terrible-looking place. Blatant, nouveau, riche and all that. The gate's closed. Not a glimmer of light, Mr. Hex. What's that white thing in the hedge by the gate? White thing? Well, have, have a look, Charlie. Cool. A blinking handkerchief. Yes, let me see. Hmm, it's a lady's handkerchief. It's got a quill or two, Charlie, threaded into it. Another bit of a trial, eh? Well, that shows Barbara's been through these gates, all right. This is definitely another pointer, Charlie. We are getting hot. Do we go in? We do. But bar that handkerchief, we've no clue that we've caught up with the lady. We'll have to tackle the house itself. Exactly. But those barred windows are not too inviting. If I make a guess, they also indicate burglar alarms in the doors in addition. It yeah, could be. Keep low. These grounds are very dangerous. We can be seen from the house. Better make for the shrubbery, I reckon, don't you? Yes. Quite near the front door. Good cover, too. Right. Give it a go, Charlie. A bit of run. I... <laughs> what the devil was that? That, Mr. X, was a shot from a man-trap. I fell over the blooming wire that set it off. Good heavens, it might have killed you. That's so. Blooming illegal is supposed to be, man-trap. Makes a burglar take his life in his hands. Well, I suppose we can expect some action after that racket. Better lie low for a while and see what happens. Do you see what I see? Yes. One, two, three lights in windows. That shot must have wakened the house all right. Don't breathe. Someone will come to see what's happened. Nothing's more certain. Oh, this way, sir. That was number two, I'm certain. It was certainly one of the guns. Uh, probably the one by the shrubbery. That's torn it. What do we do now? Clear out, Charlie. Make for the back of the house if you can. I'll go the other way, and I'll make a bit of noise while you vamoose. Skip now. If there's anyone behind that shrubbery, come out. My man and I will fire if you don't. I, sir, am behind or in your shrubbery, and I don't like it a little bit. 
especially as you've set man traps and such lethal gadgets around your otherwise charming grounds. Come out or I shoot. Very drastic method, sir. If I may say so, do you ordinarily take such precautions against casual visitors? Yes. When those casual visitors come late at night and hide in shrubbery... I had no intention in hiding in your shrubbery. But when crossing your lawn to present myself at your front door, a shot's fired, I naturally dive for cover, and there you have it. Well, who are you? Come out where we can see you. There'll be no more shooting. What you heard was a shot from a man trap. You must have caught one of the trip wires with your foot. I should be grateful, I suppose, that I wasn't shot. What did you want to see me about? You think now is the moment to talk about that? I assure you I came on business. But this reception is such that I don't feel equal to discussing it. So, with your leave, I'll return to Dorking, where I'm staying, and present myself in the morning. I don't like prowlers. I am no prowler. And if you let me call in the morning, I shall have great pleasure in stating my business, Councillor Dean. You know me? Well, of course. Or rather, of you. Why should I call here if I didn't? Why can't you state your business here and now? My dear sir, after the salvo of welcome you recently accorded me, I don't feel like staying. If you'll be at home in the morning, I'll call and discuss my business then. Uh, What's the business about? I'm sure you'll be interested when I mention the name of Brian Faversham. Brian Faversham? The very man. And now, if ten o'clock tomorrow morning will suit you? Mm, Very well. Maybe you prefer to talk tonight. I would not prefer it. For tonight I've had it, as we say in the army. Good night, Mr. Dean. Hawkins. You'll see this gentleman to the gate and shut it after him. Very good, sir. As for you, whoever you are, I shall expect you in the morning. Good night. Hawkins, I don't like the methods you employ up at the house. Guns and whatnot. Is that so? Yes. I suppose you are Mr. Dean's confidential man and so forth. I am? Mm, I feared as much. I was going to ask you some questions before I see your boss in the morning. I don't answer questions, so don't waste your breath. I'm seeing you out, and that's all. And here's the gate. Very terse and to the point. Just before you show me out, uh, were you in the army ever? No. I was exempted. Fine. So you wouldn't know this trick, would you? (coughs) You see, Hawkins, I was in the army, commanders and all that. I was in the army, and I learned to spread-eagle a man like you are now spread-eagled and make him talk. How do you like it, eh? (laughs) Not so good? Tell me, my good Hawkins, are you chauffeur, among other things, to Dean? Answer. Yes. You kept an appointment at Westminster Bridge last night with a young lady. Answer. Yes, yes, I did. And drove her down here? Yes. Oh, for heaven's sake, take the pressure off. It's all right, talk. Yes, all right. Talk, but don't yell. Or by heaven, I'll choke you. I said I talked, didn't I? Yes, you did. So now tell me more. You had uh, engine trouble? Yes. Fan belt. I stopped for water at a cottage in Gresham. Yes, I found that out myself. Now, what I want to know is, when is the lady you brought down? I don't know. Is the boss... Mr. Dean? All right, Mr. Dean. He, he meets us at the front door, takes the lady inside. Uh, I drive the car round to the garage. And then you came around the grounds and set the alarms and men, perhaps? Well, yes. Why? Oh, uh, no, no, Mr. Dean had... Had been nervous for weeks. Oh, burglars and all that. Burglars, rubbish. Mr. Dean is nervous. But why? Well, how should I know? I I reckon he thinks someone's after him, maybe. Who? Why? I can't say. He's a councillor and a public man and not too popular. Or someone with a grudge, I reckon. Your reckoning, my friend, is as accurate as Greenwich time. All right. I don't think you know any more. Enough to keep on questioning you, at any rate. Mr. Hicks. Thank you, Charlie. Yes, it's me. Where did you get to? I did as you said, but most. And then I saw a chance. His nibs was talking to you. Probably forgot the front door, so I thought this is opportunity knocking, as it were, and I nicked inside. Good. Now, Charlie, we've got a body on our hands, which I must dispose of. You, no, you're not going to... Murder you, Hawkins? Well, not yet, at oh. any rate. Not while it suits me to keep you alive. Charlie, I must talk to you, and I don't want our friend to hear. What do I do? The old commando trick. Stab him in the throat. Oh, no, no, no. A little drastic for now. No, I think we'll just use another old trick. Deafen him. Easy. Now, come on, Cully. No, No, this won't even hurt. Accurate to a degree, Charlie. Right at the base of the oral nerve. Now, tell me what happened. Well, I nicked in and gave myself a look-see all over the joint. At the first floor, I finds a locked door, too. So I says, anyone in? And sure enough, a girl answers and says... Who's that? 
I says, it's Charlie Austin. And uh, <coughs> she says... Um, well, go on, what did she say? She said, uh, <coughs> then easier. Accent on the ease. <laughs> Looks as if I didn't cut any eyes at all. <laughs> I asked why she's locked in, and she says now she's been kidnapped and shut up in that room. What then? At that moment, his nibs comes in. Only just had time to duck down the stairs and out the back way. Suddenly, I hear you and this merchant making for the front gate. Could you find the room again? Uh, from the outside, I mean. Of course I could. Do you know, Mr X, them bars on the window is a bit of an help in a way. Easy to climb. Reach the upper window from the lower one. Come on, then. Bring our deaf friend with you. Rightio. And one word from yours, and I'll stuff a rhododendron bush down your throat, see? Get that? Oh, Crocky, what's the use of talking? <laughs> he can't hear a word. That's the window. Above this one. Barred, too. I can't get through those. You could still get up there and hang on. Maybe attract your attention. So I could. Very well. You keep our friend company. <clears throat> oh, confound it. I wish you'd got a light on. Uh, top window, I think. Good. She must have heard me. There's the light on. By Jiminy. It is Barbara. 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 I am here. Splendid. She's got it. <laughs> So it appears the chase on a very slender clue has not been in vain. Fletcher has located the errand Barbara only to find her imprisoned. How is he going to learn the reason for this? Listen to the further developments of this adventure of The Grey Goose.